Okay, this is lesson three about soil. And under this lesson, we are going to talk about soil profile, soil catena, and soil fertility. So what is soil profile? Soil profile refers to the vertical arrangement of soil layers, not types of soil layers, from the surface to the parent row. The arrangement is from the top soil to the bed rock and this arrangement is vertical not horizontal soil layers can also be called horizons they are marked using letters like a b c d if you check on this illustration this illustration shows different layers on soil profile we have the top soil, we have the subsoil, weathered rock, and parent rock. Uh, if you check, you'll find this A represents the top soil, B represents the subsoil, and C, this one represents the weathered part of the rock, and D represents the parent rock which has never been affected by weathering. The agents of weathering cannot reach this layer. If we are to explain briefly one by one or looking at each layer, for example, basing on the diagram, we had the layer which was marked A. This is the top soil or top layer at the surface of the earth. Its soil is always dark and rich in organic matter called humus because that's where vegetation is, that's where animals live. When these animals die and we people die, we are buried on that layer, we decompose, we form rich humus. Even when plants are cut or vegetation is cut, it decomposes and forms humus, which remains in subwater soil. So that's why we say it is rich in organic matter called humus. Uh, and again, it has very many living organisms because it is near the, it is on acid surface. Then again, we have horizon B. This is called the subsoil. It is under the top water, top soil. Its color is determined by the parent rock and the presence of organic matter in top water soil. The, uh, again, it has few living organisms and it is rich in clay deposits. Then we have horizon C. Horizon C is partly weathered. It has a layer with recently weathered materials. It has raw organic matter and it is a zone of deposition. If minerals are to move, they move from the other layer above and they are deposited. They move from A, B and deposited in C. Reaching takes place in A, can even affect B, and then minerals are deposited in C. When we reach S6, we shall start the processes like irruviation, irruviation, and leaching. We shall understand more about the deposition of minerals from one layer to another, vertically or horizontally. Then we have horizon D. This is the parent rock. It contains the rock which is resistant to weathering. It is not affected by weathering because it is at the deeper layer where agents like rainfall or rainwater, where agents like man, where agents like other moving animals on on acid surface, 
where agents like temperature cannot reach to weather away the rock because it is deeper. Then what is soil catena? Because we are always asked to explain the difference between catena and profile. Soil catena is the sequence, the arrangement of different soil types down the slope. We are not saying from the surface to the bottom, we are saying on a hill slope, the sequence may be the horizontal arrangement of soil types, this time not layers, down the slope. Because we believe that types of soil keep on changing as one moves from the top of the mountain or hill to the bottom. Soils in valleys are different from soils on the hilltop. Soils on gentle slopes are different from soils on steep slopes. It is the horizontal arrangement of soil types down the slope, which means for soil catena to be understood very well, we use a hill. We shall see on the diagram. It shows changes that take place in the soil from the top to the bottom of the slope. Okay, this diagram may help us a bit. This is the hill top. This is the hill top and this is the valley. And when you look at the slope, the gradient is not the same. The gradient keeps on reducing as you move from the top to the valley. At the hill top, we have bare soils, bare rocks, rocks without even vegetation. They are seen stony soils. They are seen stony soils. Hmm? The soils are bare. They are not covered by vegetation because of forces of maybe erosion. Then as you move down, we have upper slope. This is the hill top. This is the upper slope. From the hill top on top, you go to the upper slope, the free face. Here we have uh, reddish soils or reddish brown soils. And uh, uh, here I think the, 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 the depth, the, the profile is still shallow. It's not deep because of the gradient being steep. Then as you move from the upper slope, you go to the lower slope. Lower slope comes before the valley bottom. Lower slope has yellowish soils and brown deep soils. Yellowish and brown deep soils as you enter the, the valley bottom. Then from lower slope, we enter the valley down, the valley bottom. We, here we have very deep soils, and most of the soils here are gray and clay. Clay or clay soils, and the color of these soils is always gray. Uh, when you look at the soil catena, it has two, I mean it has three major divisions, three major parts, complexes. It has the alluvial complex, it has the corruvial complex, and alluvial complex. Alluvial complex, corruvial complex, and alluvial complex. Hmm? Eruvio complex is the upper convex slope where the weathered materials are washed out downwards. It includes the summit, the top of the hill and the free face. So the hill top and the other region next to the hill top make up the eruvio complex. 
with shallow soils, bare rocks, skeletal soils. Hmm? Then we have colluvial complex. We have a colluvial complex. This is the lower concave. Concave, this time not convex. Concave slope, where there is gradual deposition of eroded materials. On the alluvial complex, erosion was common. As we come to colluvial complex, deposition begins to occur. Limited deposition of, of the eroded materials from alluvial complex. Uh, the soil of the colluvial complex is moderately drained and retains certain moisture. And therefore, agriculture can take place in this division. Then we have the third one as you move to the bottom of the valley, the alluvial complex. This occupies the very bottom where the materials are deposited. Eruvio. When you look at eruvio, it is for erosion. Coruvio is for limited deposition. And eruvio is for maximum deposition because it is within the valley or the lowland. Importance of soil catena. Why should geographers have knowledge about soil catena? This horizontal sequence of soil types on a hill side, or the sequence of soil types on a hill side, or down the slope. Soil catena helps to determine the best site for settlement. If you were a wise geographer, I think you would not build a house on a Ruvio complex or on a hilltop or on the next division because mass wasting and erosion will affect you. But if you were a bright geographer, you would build that a gentle slope towards the valley or not into the valley exactly because you need to first check whether this valley is either V-shaped or cellular and an extensive, such that you are able to know whether you will be affected by floods or not. It determines the best site for quarry, exploitation of clay, sand, and these local rocks. Because if you look at the uh, free face towards the hill top, you can exploit local rocks for construction. If you look at the bottom, in the, in the last complex, at the bottom of the hill, you can quarry, you can exploit sand and clay. You cannot go on a hilltop looking for sand. As you cannot go down in the, in the valley looking for stones, then the very bottoms are used for brick laying. For example, in Rwanda, we have Ruriva clay works. If you look at that lowland, I mean the bottom of the hill, that's where they get clay for making bricks. Then we have the alluvial complex is used for agriculture due to deep soils. The very bottoms are used for rice growing, the growth of vegetables, yams, etc. If you were to construct a road, you would also look at the nature of the land and decide whether you will construct the road at Coruvio, Eruvio, or Eruvio. Hmm. Soil fertility. What is soil fertility? This is the ability of the soil to support plant growth. The ability of the soil to support plant growth. And we have a number of factors affecting soil fertility. Number one, mineral matter. 
how much mineral soil contains hmm? because different crops need different minerals and therefore the more the minerals the more the fertility and the lesser the minerals the lesser the fertility organic matter or humus because this is manure and i believe soils with enough manure or enough organic matter or humus are more fertile than those without humus soil water fertile soil should have water support crop production and soils without enough water content might not support crop growing and this depends also on the crop growing some crops need more water than others for example rice is grown in wetlands it needs more water uh, while other crops might not need as much water as rice needs soil nutrients potassium calcium sodium is it uh, these are chemical elements found in the soil they help in plant growth and ensure that soil remains fertility. Thickness of the soil. Is the soil deep? Is it thin or it is thick? Hmm? Thin soils are not always good for agriculture compared to thick soils. Soil permeability. Does soil allow water to pass through? enter and pass through or soil does not allow water to pass and even enter hmm? the ability of the soil to allow water to pass through that is soil permeability and that ability not to allow water to pass through is soil impermeability so i think best soil for crop production it should be permeable hmm? Soil texture, the size of soil particles. Clay soils, clay loam soils are more fertile than other soils. Clay loam soils have a small texture, and the research says clay loam are fertile compared to other soils. Soil acidity and alkalinity, that is pH. Some, soil, some crops need acidic soils and other soils need soils with much alkalis. But in short, basic soils are much more fertile than acidic soils. However, this may depend on the crop grown. Thank you.